Imagine you're walking around with a friend, when all of a sudden, you happen to stagger across a person that so strongly resembles them they could be their identical twin. They're even wearing matching outfits. Initially amused, you get their attention, only for this false twin to answer you in your friend's voice. And you are horrified. How can this be? You know where your friend is. After all, they are the ones that are currently standing right next to you. Or are they? Doppelgangers are by far one of Fear and Hunger Termina's most unusual and unsettling enemies. At the making of this video, there are four doppelgangers you can directly encounter in-game, and six confirmed in the universe total. However, these numbers may potentially fluctuate in later updates, as the game files contain a doppelganger of Abella and a scrapped concept for Olivia, meaning that we may potentially get more in the future, potentially one meant to correspond to each contestant. The doppelgangers are also extremely valuable enemies from a gameplay perspective, as they provide you the currency needed to barter with Pocket Cat without having to kill other contestants to nab said currency. Yet despite this value, the game doesn't give any substantial information regarding what they are, how they came to be, or what their overall purpose in the narrative is, but it provides just enough details that we can speculate. So without further ado, let's do just that. The four doppelgangers that we can encounter in game are Levi's, Tanaka's, Marina's, and Olivia's, whereas the two others that are not directly met but are definitely confirmed in universe are Karen's and Samari's. None are found in the exact same location, and the ones that are found seem to have significant physical variations. Players that encounter the less well-developed doppelgangers without knowing what they are tend to make the assumption they are witnessing characters in the earliest stages of Moonscorch, whereas some speculate the doppelgangers are Moonscorch villagers made to resemble the contestants. A natural assumption, given that Moonscorch is the primary means of transformation in this universe. However, this is more likely than not not the case. But why, you may ask? Well, for starters, the doppelgangers don't seem to understand what it even means to be human. Tanaka's doesn't understand that human heads can't rotate 180 degrees, Levi's doesn't even have hands. But the best evidence for this, I think, comes from Olivia's original scrapped concept, in which the doppelganger mistakenly interprets Olivia's wheelchair as a part of her body and coats its own interpretation of it in flesh. All encounter doppelgangers struggle to successfully and accurately mimic human speech, with them typically repeating one to two phrases on a loop. So if the doppelgangers don't even have at least a crude awareness of what it means to be human, then I think it's very unlikely they were ever people to begin with. But if they're not former people, then what exactly are they? They definitely have supernatural origins, but it's hard to state if they're even outright malicious. A possible and common explanation is that they may be predators of some kind that mimic other members of their designated praise groups in order to better lure them in. After all, the doppelgangers' defining features are their large jaws, which typically take up the space where their face should be. Marina's and Tanaka's even outright threaten to swallow the player whole, although this line could potentially be a reference to Megami Tensai, a video game series in which doppelgangers are potential enemies and where most enemies will shout some equivalent of I will swallow you whole when fought. However, in Termina, it's not out of the question for this statement to be interpreted somewhat literally. It's also possible the species references the mimic monsters from Dungeons and Dragons, with them also being shapeshifters that shapeshift for the purpose of luring prey closer in and are defined by large, salivating jaws upon transformation. But although this was my initial thought, the majority of the doppelgangers will not actually fight the player unprompted. The only one that outright does so is Levi's, and it's commonly accepted amongst the fanbase this is likely because his mimic is the only one that's incomplete, and therefore, the only one that cannot rely on at least temporarily tricking the player, forcing him into an immediately hostile state. Yet Tanaka's, Marina's, and Olivia's all keep to themselves for the most part, the latter two even partaking in activities their counterparts traditionally would. They all make the claim they don't actually want to fight, with Olivia's even crying out as Olivia even after you prove it isn't the person that it's imitating. All three of these characters can be conversed with in battle, and all three will hesitate to strike if the player makes this move, which aren't the actions of a mere animal that just wants to eat. The actions of Olivia specifically seem to suggest to me the doppelgangers themselves aren't fully aware they are the fakes, yet the doppelgangers' mimicry skills are limited to whatever observations they are able to make about the contestants. A theorized reason for why Levi's doppelganger is so incomplete and has such limited, stilted speech is because the only time Levi speaks at the point the doppelgangers make their observations is when he introduces himself. And this isn't even something that happens on screen, he presumably introduces himself to a person off camera. Likewise, Olivia's dialogue is reduced to her name and the responses that she'll give to the player should they choose to speak to her on the train. The only two things her doppelganger understands about her being the fact that she's a botanist and that she has a condition that prevents her from using her legs. Except the doppelganger doesn't really understand the implications of this condition because it runs. Marina's dialogue is the only of the four that doesn't entirely revolve around the dialogue that she speaks on the train or in the forest, and is therefore the most convincing doppelganger of the four. But even she is somewhat limited, as she will not engage the player's questions if she cannot find an appropriate mimicked response. The physical and mental variations of the doppelgangers lead me to believe that their completeness is entirely wrapped up in how detailed the observations they can make are. 
Characters that have a higher likelihood of dying or moon scorching early, Levi and Tanaka specifically, being the least complete ones. And for me, the most compelling piece of evidence here is a doppelganger we don't ever face off with, Karen's. Karen's doppelganger can be witnessed upon entering the TV room, in which a broadcast will begin playing showing her reporting on a murder in Prehevel. The Karen that we witness in the broadcast perfectly resembles the Karen that we see standing beside us, to the point that when Karen tells us that whoever we saw was not her as she's never even been to Prehevel, there are numerous options for the player to doubt her. It's by far the best and most convincing doppelganger of the lot and potentially may have been able to develop to this point because Karen is the only character that has extensive footage recording her speech patterns and mannerisms. This phenomenon then leads us to what is the next most natural question. Why do the doppelgangers exist at all, especially if they don't seem to want to eat the contestants and only aspire to be able to mimic them as closely as possible? The most likely answer seems to lie in the knowledge that we can gather from Karen's mimic and Marina's B ending. In order to unlock Marina's B ending, Samari must be killed. And yet, we see Samari in the background of Marina's photo, which would be impossible were it not for the existence of the doppelganger. From Karen and Olivia's doppelgangers, we can gather the doppelganger naturally seeks to fill in the role their counterpart does. Karen's goes straight to reporting, Olivia's flocks off to the forest to observe the local herbs, and Samari's goes straight back to stalking Marina, the doppelgangers even inheriting their desires. But for as to why they would seek to imitate their original counterpart so closely, an answer is provided by Rancid the Sergal who states the doppelgangers have been specifically created for the purpose of replacing the missing, intended to seamlessly replace the passengers so that nobody would notice they had gone missing in the first place. It's a chilling end for any character that passes, with them either being doomed to die a bizarre and painful death as a contestant in the Festival of Termina, or die a moon-scorched amalgamation of their deepest pains and traumas, all while an imposter takes their place and enjoys the peace they rightfully should have had, while their friends, loved ones, and family are none the wiser. Thank you all for delving into the dungeons with us, and if you enjoyed, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And here's an extra special thank you to our Patreons. What we do would not be possible without your support. If you would like to consider becoming one of them, the link is in the description. Thank you all for your time, and have a fabulous day!